Good morning, it's Thursday, January 19th. Thanks for joining us for Top Story. Click the like and subscribe button below, then head over to the full World Watch show to get more news. Now, this is Top Story. We don't get a ton of snow in North Carolina, but when we do, I love to go sledding. Now, if only you could do it without having to walk up the hill each run. That part, Hannah, exhausting. Well, then you should try dog sledding, Brian. All the fun of flying across the snow without the work of pulling the sled. Talk about hitching a free ride. But the sled dogs aren't the only ones putting in the work. So do mushers, like Dawn Lanning. I've been doing this 25, 26 years. It's a lifestyle, and you really gotta love it because it is a lot of work. Years ago, she got a Siberian Husky from a friend who couldn't take care of it. And today, she has 40 dogs and runs the family dog sledding business with her son, Sean. You'll notice that not all of these dogs are the same breed of Huskies. Siberians are probably the type you picture when you think of a sled dog, but they're actually the slow pokes of the Husky world. Alaskan Huskies are better suited to running long distances, with longer legs and thinner coats. They're Siberian Huskies that have been crossed with another breed. Now that you've met the dogs, it's time for some important ground rules. Number one, always remember, whatever you do, never let go of the sled, or else you'll be left in a snowbank while the dogs run off with the sled. You would like to think that if uh, if you fall off, the dogs are going to look back and say, oh no, he fell off, you know? Um, no, it's just, ha ha ha, see you later. Yeah. Yeah. Next important tip, how to slow down the dogs when you do want to get off. Thankfully, there's a break. If you feel like you're going too fast, by all means, just one foot is going to slow these guys down. Um, it's going to take two feet and all your weight to really stop them. Okay. During all of the instructions, some of the dogs wait patiently, while others, not so patient. That's one quality Lanning says is essential to have as a musher. You know, sometimes your runs go well and sometimes they don't. So patience and, you know, doesn't do any good to get mad. The crew works quickly, fitting the dogs with their harnesses and hooking them up to the sled. The dogs are paired up according to size and stride, so they can run in step with their teammate. And oh boy, once they're hooked up to the sled, I don't know if you can tell by all the racket, but these guys are ready to go. The musher stands on the runners, and a passenger or two can ride in the sled in the front. And they're off. To tell the dogs to turn left, you say, ha. For right turns, you say, gee. And on by means keep going straight. The dogs are eager the first few laps, but after going around and around, a few slow up a bit. So that team is subbed out for a new one who is eagerly awaiting their turn. These dogs aren't ready to run the Iditarod, but they do run 10 to 12 miles a day, after which they're pretty worn out. But by tomorrow, they'll be ready and raring to go again. Headlines can be scary. Talking about them with kids doesn't have to be. Introducing Concurrently, the News Coach podcast from God's World News. Let's teach children with calm discernment. Hey, don't forget the full site is yours to explore where you can watch more news and features free for a week. Just go to worldwatch.news forward slash free video. Well, thanks for watching everybody on the Big Bash. Remember, whatever the news, the purpose of the Lord will stand.